Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on Google Keep. I'm Jorgen Anderson with Collective, and if you want to get in contact with me, reach out on jorgen.anderson at collective.com. This will be an in-depth tutorial of Google Keep, how it can be used and how you can benefit from using it in different note-taking situations. We'll start with an introduction to Google Keep, the next sections will be on the basic functionality of Google Keep, like adding notes, categorizing notes, navigating and searching for notes. We'll then take a look at the different settings you can do in Google Keep. After that, we will take a look at how to share notes with others for collaboration. And finally, we'll look at some more advanced use cases like the Keep Chrome extension, OCR, reminders and a few more gems. Google Keep is a note-taking application from Google. It can be used for free for personal use, and it's also included in Google G Suite for businesses, where it's covered by the G Suite Terms of Use as a core service. Google Keep is not a one-to-one -one replacement for Microsoft OneNote or Evernote, but as a fairly advanced user of OneNote for several years, my own experience is that it covers most, if not all, of my note-taking needs. It's definitely super easy to use, has lots of nice features, and works across all your devices seamlessly, since all data is being stored automatically to your Google account without you ever having to worry about it. Now let's take a closer look at how to use Google Keep. To begin with, we need to open up the application as such from the Google Apps menu. And this is when you have Google G Suite. Otherwise, you'll just go to keep.google.com and sign in. And this is how the application looks at a first glance. Now, to take my first very simple note, I click here in the dialog and add a title, in this case, Leo's Pizza. I like to take a note here on this pizza place where I was to eat at one time and we'd like to remember it for later. So I type in the address and the phone number for Leo's Pizza and I have my first very simple note. There are a few other ways to take notes. Perhaps I'd like to make a checklist as a note. I'm about to order business cards and for that purpose I need to create a checklist of things that I need to consider when ordering business cards. So I give it the title and the first item I come up with is that I need to go look for different designs online, designs of business cards that I like and perhaps would like to use myself. I need to take a photo of myself that I can put on the business card. I need to order the business cards of course possibly online. I have to find a photographer that can help me out and take a photo of me for the business cards. And I need to receive a quote from this photographer or from several photographers so I can decide on which one I'd like to enlist. And I also like to find a business card holder for business cards that I receive from other people. As you can see, this isn't quite the order in which I'd like to perform all these tasks. So therefore, I'd like to reorder them a little bit. I might very well like to start looking at some designs, but I can't order business cards before I've had a quote from a photographer or been to take a photograph. I need to find a photographer and get a quote from that photographer before I can actually go there and take my photograph. I found some really nice images online of business cards that I'd like to use and I have these here in my pictures folder. So I go to that folder and I include those images here in the note and I can do this for several different pictures of designs that I like to use. I've also found a few images online that I'd like to store as URLs. So therefore I take those URLs and I include them in my note. 
Now I have an idea on how I'd like my business card to look. So therefore, I decided to include a simple drawing on my node. I open up this Add Drawing dialog where I can make a simple drawing, a simple design of my business card and store that onto my note. And when I'm done with my drawing, just click back and the drawing will be stored along with the other images. Now, as time goes by, I'm starting to work with the note and I finish off items one by one. And as you can see, when I check them off, they end up in the bottom of the note underneath the other items, which I have not finished yet. Now, using Google Keep with your mobile device is just as easy as using the web client. I have my notes here that I've done and I open up my business card checklist. I decided to add something. Actually, I need to do the sign of a business card before I choose to order one. And it's also very easy to move items around on your mobile device like this. I actually need to design my business cards before I order my business cards. However, one of these URLs that I included before, I've decided I don't need it anymore. It's not really something I like. So I click on the little cross at the end of the item and it gets deleted. And as you see in the background, the web client is updated at the same time. A different quite useful way of adding images to my note is to use my mobile device and take a photo. So I press on the little plus sign, I press on take photo, the camera application is open and I can take a photo. Then I press use photo and that stores the image to my note. Now in my first note for Leo's Pizza, I've decided to also add a web address to Leo's Pizza. So I take the web address to Leo's Pizza and I add it in my note like this. And as you can see, when I do that, you actually get a little bit of a preview of that link at the bottom of your note. Now you can add more than one URL like this. I'm going to bring in a Google Doc and add that URL. And as you can see, that URL is also previewed at the bottom of the note. When I close my note, you can see both these previews at the bottom of the note and you also get a clickable link. Let's say I feel that I'm finished with the note. I don't want it here on my main view anymore. Then I can choose to archive a note by clicking on archive and it will go into my archive. This note perhaps isn't at all valid anymore. I may have found a better pizza place then I can choose to delete that note altogether. If I by mistake do any of this, I don't have to worry because I can go into the archive and I can choose unarchive and that note will then come back to the main view again. And the same thing goes for deleted note. I can choose to click restore here under the menu and that note will then get restored back to my main view again. After having used Google Keep for a while and I have uh, lots of different notes here, things can become a bit messy. So I need to start sorting or categorizing my notes. I can move them around like this by just dragging and dropping them. But frankly, it's not that useful when I get many notes on my main board. Therefore, there's a way to create labels that I can use to categorize and sort my notes. So I can add a new label by clicking on the menu here and then add the label work. And this note then belongs to the category work. I can create a different label called personal and that note will then be connected to the personal label. I can also create labels or add notes to labels by using a simple hashtag notation like this. 
As you can see, the labels that I've just created have turned up in my left menu. And by clicking on these labels, I will show only those nodes that has that label attached to them. This is a very useful way to categorize and navigate between different nodes. To get back to all my notes again, I just click on the notes at the top of the left menu. Yet another way to categorize and sort notes, or at least relate notes to each other, is to use colors. Perhaps I think that the red color means a little bit more important notes. Maybe the yellow color means notes that needs to stand out in a bit. And the green color perhaps means notes that I don't really have to work at right now. I can also pin notes to my main view like this by just clicking on the pin icon on the note. This means the note will be in its separate section and always be at the top of my board and I can have several notes pinned to the top of the board if I like to. Now we're going to take a look at how to navigate around the application. Well, over here at the left, we have our menu and on top of the menu is a hamburger icon. You can close the menu by pressing that button and you can open it up again. Under that icon, we have notes, which is coming back to the main view. We have reminders which shows me all the reminders that I have or all the notes that has reminders rather. Again, we have the labels, which I can use to navigate between notes that are attached to different labels. And when I'm standing on a particular label like this and add a new note, that particular note will automatically get that label that I had selected in the left menu. This can be useful if I want to create many new notes for a specific label. I can also create a new label here. I can edit labels. I can delete them, change their names, etc. You can also get to settings. You can send feedback. You can get some help. You can do app downloads and you can find the keyboard shortcuts here as well. At the top of the application, you see the search field, which we'll take a closer look at later. We have a manual refresh button that can be used if I suspect that the web client for some reason hasn't been refreshed. And there is also a way to switch between a list view, which will stack all my notes on top of each other like this, or the grid view. When uh, working with notes, of course, I'd like to collaborate with others on my notes. Perhaps I have a colleague who is also about to order business cards. I press collaborator and then I just type in the email address of the person I'd like to share with. If this person is within my organization, I can select them from that drop down list that occurs. And then this person can also work on that note. I can share a note also with a group. So I just add the email address of one of the Google groups within my organization. And when I do that, all the persons within that organization or that group rather will be able to collaborate with me on the note. I can also share my note in a third way, and that is by collaborating together with someone who has a Gmail address. So I just type in the email to someone with a Gmail address like that. And that person will also be able to collaborate on the note. There's currently no way to share with someone who does not have a Gmail address. Now let's take a look at a few different ways of searching for notes. I do that using the search field on top of the application. And when I do this, I get a few pre-cooked alternatives for me. I can click on reminders to show all my notes that it has reminders. I can click on lists to show all the notes that are checklists. I can click on image in order to get all my notes that has images in them. Or I can click on drawings to get all the notes that has a drawing that I've done myself. I can also navigate through my labels that I've created and there's also a specific category called 
things. This is where Google has found different types of categories or created different kinds of categories based on the things that I've written inside notes. So food, groceries and films, where for instance, I made a note just including different film names or movie names and the word movies in the title and it categorizes this note as films for me. I also have notes categorized by people that I have collaborated with. So if I click on a person in this category, I see all the notes that are collaborated on together with that person or group. You also have a category for the different colors that you've chosen to use for notes. But these are pre-made categories that I can use for searching for notes. I can also search on free text. So if I type the word pizza in here, I find all the notes that has the word pizza in them. And if I search on the word collective, I find all the notes that has the word collective in them. Now, for instance, this note doesn't really seem to have the text collective in it, does it? But in fact, what's happened is that if I look into the images of the note and I click through them, there is one image that has the word collective in it. So what's happened here is that Google has behind the scenes scanned this image, performed optical character recognition on the image, extracted that text and made the note searchable through that text. There are a few settings that you can do for Google Keep and you click settings to see those. You can decide on how you want new items in a checklist to show. You can e either have them show at the top of the list or at the bottom of the list. You can also decide what happens when you check an item in your checklist, if it should go to the bottom part of the note or if it should stay at its place. You can choose your default reminders and set up how your morning reminder should be your afternoon and your evening reminder. You can also enable sharing here, which is actually essential if you'd like to be able to share your notes with others. And if you should be able to participate in notes that others share with you. And here you also decide if you want to show rich link previews at the bottom of your notes for URLs that you include. With Google Keep, there's also a Chrome extension available that you can use for very useful scenarios. It's found under App Downloads Chrome extension, which will get you into the Chrome Web Store. And here you can choose to add this Chrome extension to your Chrome. Using the Chrome extension, when you're on a web page that you'd like to make a note about or you'd like to save this, you can click on the Google Chrome extension icon and you get a small dialog where you can type in your note for this page. Now you can type it in by hand like this and it also gets stored automatically to Google Keep for you. You can also highlight text on the web page like this, right click and select save selection to keep. That means that the highlighted text will end up in the note that you created before. And it will be together with the note that you made previously. So you're not gonna create yet another note. There's only one note per URL. I can also choose to connect this note directly to one of my labels. And I choose work here, which categorizes my note to the work label. One other way to create a completely new note with the Google Keep Chrome extension is to just go to a page, highlight a text, right click and select save selection to keep. This will create a completely new note with just that text and connect it to the URL. I can also choose again to use a label, of course, and that note will then be categorized to that label. And then I can add a title to the note.
if for some reason I decide that I don't want to keep the note that I just made, I can just click delete here right in the Chrome extension dialog and that note will be deleted from Google Keep. If I then go back to the main board, I see my two notes here that I just made with the Chrome extension. And they also have, as you see, a URL preview that you can use to get back to that page easily through clicking them. A very useful thing with Google Keep is the concept of reminders. So to add a reminder to a note, I just click on the reminders button here. And then I can choose when I would like to be reminded, maybe tomorrow at 8 a.m. or next week at 8 a.m. Or I can set a specific date and a specific time, of course, as well. There are two more ways to add reminders to a note. And we're going to take a look at those here. The first one is to do a recurring reminder. So I click on the reminders icon again. I choose next week at 8 a.m. for instance. And then I go back into the reminder and I choose recurring. And I would like this to recur every week. So every week at a specific day at 8 o'clock, this reminder will pop up and remind me that this note needs to be taken care of. Reminders also automatically show up in your Google Calendar, which is very useful because they will pop up just as any other reminder will, and you can edit it, you can mark it as done, and work with your reminders from your calendar. The final way to be reminded about a note is to be reminded when I am at a certain place or location. So I just type in a location here and as Google is very good with locations, I type in a street name and it'll find it for me and I add that as a reminder. So the next time I'm, I am at that location, Google Keep will remind me that I should take care of this note. When you're on your mobile device, there is an option for you to use your voice to create notes instead of typing them. In order to do this, you press the voice command icon at the bottom and then you speak your note. Remember to upload video. And when you're done with it, you press the back button and your note is created for you. Another way to use your mobile device and take notes is to use your camera on your mobile device, which you can use to take pictures of, for instance, a receipt or a document that I like to make searchable. So I click on the plus sign and then take photo and my camera application will show, which I can use to photograph, in this case, a parking ticket. And then I click use photo. I can then also add, of course, a title if I want to. And I can add other notes as well to this if I want to. What will happen now is that Google in the background will scan the image, do optical character recognition of the text in the image. And I can then go to the search field and I can type in any of the items of text in this image. For instance, the word Stockholm, as in this case. And when I do that, the image or the note will pop up for me because the text has been scanned and OCR'd. After a while, notes can become quite large and contain a lot of text. And quite often, a note might be a way to actually start a process where in the end you would like to create a document. So you can click on the menu item here on a note and choose Copy to Google Docs. This will take all the text from the note and copy into a Google Doc, which you can open and start working with. All the text has been copied and of course, I can also add other texts 
into this document. I can also work from within Google Docs by choosing the menu option Keep Notepad from the Tools menu. This opens up a Keep Notepad where all my notes from my Google Keep are shown. And this means I can grab one of these notes and drag and drop it onto my Google Doc. And both images and text will then end up in my Google Doc instead. This has been a tutorial on Google Keep and hopefully it has inspired you to use Google Keep even more for your note taking needs. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. You can leave comments in the comment field below. Please share the video on your social media and subscribe to our channel to get updates on new videos posted here. If you'd like to get in contact with me directly, please email me at jorgen.anderson at collective.com.